my name is Kylie Mosley, a history major here at Iowa State University, graduating in spring of 2021. And I'm Madison Rostro, history and anthropology major, graduating in the class of 2022. Welcome to our co-curated exhibition, Flicker and Flame, Whale Oil, and Kerosene Lamps, here at the Farmhouse Museum. The exhibition features over 50 glass and ceramic whale oil and kerosene lamps, along with matchup holders and spills from the University Museum's collection and Iowa Quester Glass Collection. The exhibition explores the history, designs, and innovations of whale oil and kerosene lamps, and also explores the history of illumination here at the Farmhouse Museum. These are two examples of ancient oil lamps. On the right, we have a bronze Roman or Byzantine lamp, circa 1000 CE, and on the left, we have a stone Islamic lamp. The stone lamps, like this example, were usually carved, however, early stone lamps were simply stones possessing natural depressions. The use of stone lamps in the Mediterranean dates back as far as the Upper Paleolithic. While stone continued to be used, it became less popular with the advent of ceramic technology. Here we have a banquet lamp that is from the late 19th century, and a banquet lamp, as you can tell, is taller than a regular lamp. And this one in particular is interesting because of the chimney here, still has a kerosene oil chimney and then it's also electrified at a later date. So people in the time period of the 19th century, they wanted to keep that aesthetic of the lamps around their home to have that elegant lamp look. This is another example of a banquet lamp. It was graciously gifted to us by the Iowa Questers. As you can see, it's a unique type of banquet lamp. When it was kerosene, it would have held kerosene in this middle basin. It would have had the lighted component at the top. But when it was electrified, it became even more unique due to its three lighted components. Like the previous three-pieced electrified banquet lamp, these two are made by the same company, which is the Consolidated Lamp and Glass Company. They are both milk glass, with painted surface. And this would be a more traditional sized kerosene lamp. This is another kerosene lamp circa 1890s that was manufactured by the Fostoria Glass Company. It is a painted milk glass font and globe with a clear glass chimney. This style of lamp is called the Gone with the Wind because it has similar lamps that were often used on the set of the 1939 movie starring Clark Gable and Vivian Leigh, though this style of lamp was popular between the 1890s and 1910. Gone with the Wind lamps are generally a vase or parlor lamp with a removable fount and matching painted or embossed decoration on both the lamp base and shade. This Victorian era kerosene lamp produced in the early 1870s by Ripley and Company of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania has twin bristle, opaque blue glass lamp bowls connected to one central pillar on a pressed glass base. In the 1700s, Bristol, England was producing fine opaque glass, often made to imitate porcelain. Likely this is where the unique color of the Bristol blue glass garnered its name. This type of lamp is often referred to as a marriage lamp or wedding lamp because of the dual lamp light. Here we have an example of two spill vases, both manufactured by Wedgwood. The one on the left is an example of Jasperware, while the one on the right is an example of the Persian shape. The one on the right is actually the more typical traditional style of Wedgwood, which is the blue and the white. What is a spill? A spill was a piece of paper that you would wad up and put in the fireplace to light the lamps. And then you would discard that piece of paper into the spill vases. This is an example of a brass Betty lamp from the early 1800s. Betty lamps burned fish oil or fat as a replacement to candles during the colonial period through the early to mid 1800s. The term Betty is derived from the German word besser, meaning to make better. The lamps reduced the risk of fire like an open flame candle and were often made of brass, tin, or iron. The lamp could be hung which freed up the user's hands, especially in the barn, shop, or storehouse. Lamps often came with objects like a pickwick. This is a finger lamp which was more common during nighttime because of the attached match holder. This one dates to about 1870 till 1900. 
and is gifted from the Iowa Cluster Glass Collection. Here we have an example of composite lamps that were popular in the 1880s to the early 1900s. Composite lamps were best known because of their interchangeable bases. Here we have an example of two ceramic and then one redwood, also known as pottery. Whale oil, used for lamps and making candles, was a major source of artificial lighting in the United States in the mid-19th century. Consumer demand for this important resource prompted a thriving whaling industry. Yankee whalers departed from ports in New England and New York's Long Island to sail around the world searching for whales to hunt. The 1851 publication of Herman Melville's novel, Moby Dick, increased the public's interest in whaling. Whale oil lamps worked by combining burning fluid as a mixture of alcohol and turpentine and used as lamp fuel in the 19th century. Burning fluid, which was dangerously explosive, was replaced by kerosene in the late 1850s. The burner from a lamp utilizing burning fluid or camphene is distinguished by the presence of tapered wick tubes extending upward at an angle away from the lamp. While sometimes found with only a single wick tube, they are most frequently found with two. Burning fluid, being very volatile, benefited from this design that transferred heat away from the fuel unlike the design of a whale oil burner. In this example, these burners most often had caps attached to small chains to extinguish the flame and to prevent evaporation of the fluid when not in use. Fluid burners were most always made of brass and had a threaded base. The wicks were adjusted by picking from the wick tube opening with a pick wick, an example of which can be found in this exhibition. This is a Vapo Cresoline Vaporizer, date unknown. This vaporizer missing the, its glass chimney was once commonly used for medicinal purposes with a cresoline solution purported to contain a germ-destroying ingredient that, when inhaled, would treat diseases. The cresoline solution, made from coal tar, was heated in the top bowl by flame, creating a vapor throughout the room. According to advertisements, the lamp was supposed to cure whooping cough and other sicknesses. Though interesting and unique in design, it is one of the many medically worthless turn-of-the-century antiseptics brought to the market. Thank you for joining us on our curator's tour of Flicker and Flame. If you would like to come see it in person, we are open Monday through Friday, noon to four. The exhibition will run until October of 2021. Thanks again to the Iowa Questers for their generous donations. Thanks for watching.